Hi, everybody. My name is John DePietro. And I'm Bob Zagami with the Camp Report Show. Now, let's change up things a little bit, Bob. Uh, normally, I say, and I'm going to be talking about, but we're doing it a little bit differently. So tell me what you're talking about, and then I'll follow up with that. Go ahead. Well, I've, I've got my section of the show, because tonight is all park, park models. Park and models. It's with uh, Joel Letterman and uh, Brent Cattell, who are the founders of Elevation Park Model. And we had a chance to go out there and broadcast RVing in New England there from the factory. And we toured the factory and met with their team. And uh, I'm going to have them. I'm going to be in the reception area in the main lobby and talking about the creation of the company and the importance of park models. Okay. I'll also be there, but I will be in the president's office talking with the president and the co-founder. Okay. And I'm going to be talking well, about well, the, the same two people that I, they're the same two people that I talked to, yeah, but I got into the corporate office. You were stuck. Well, you, got, you, got, you got the headquarters. You got, you got the big desk. Right. And then we have all the news of the week that we're going to talk about that. Where do we get that news, Bob? From RV Business and Rick Kessler and Ben Quiggle over at Woodall's Campground Magazine. We couldn't do it without them. We have oh. a great show lined up. It's all about park models right here. Where, Mr. Zagami? On the Camp Report Show. Stay with us, everybody. Attention all RVers. Say goodbye to roof worries and hello to worry-free travel with RV Roof Magic. This revolutionary liquid butyl roof coating is specially formulated to protect your RV from the elements to extend its lifespan and prevent leaks. With simple application and outstanding results, RV Roof Magic is the go-to choice for RV owners seeking superior roof protection. Don't let roof maintenance issues hold you back. RV Roof Magic is the only liquid butyl rubber in the world that offers a one coat, no primer coverage and a 10 year warranty. Visit rvroofmagic.com slash RV life and extend your roof another 18 to 20 years. Hey everybody, my name is John DePietro. That gentleman over there is Bob Zagami. This is the news section. And Bob, uh, you know, we're, we're at the time of the year where Memorial Day weekend is uh, coming up. In fact, this show comes out on the Friday of Memorial Day weekend when many millions of people, in fact, um, our friends at RVIA, have put together a study with our friends at Karn Consulting, Scott Baer. Hey, at hey. 45, Scott Baer. Yep. Yeah, 45 million people will be um, RVing this summer, but 18 million are hitting the road in an RV this weekend. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And uh, Karen Redford, who had uh, Redford, who runs the Go, she's chief marketing officer for Go RVing said that RVing offers a unique combination of freedom, adventure, and value. And that's true. It proved out in all the surveys. But some of the things that they found in with uh, Scott Baer's uh, research is what really attracts them is the allure of the open road. Open road. Convenience. A positive past experience, and they want to repeat it. Connection with nature, which is really big and very popular right now with people getting to the outdoors. Yep. And affordability. Affordability, and you don't have to put up with all the crap going to the train station or the bus, you know, the airport. And- As we just dealt with in the last couple of weeks. Right, exactly. You know, I figured out the other day, coming back from this event where you are right there at the uh, Elevation Factory, we traveled 12 hours from noon to midnight from the time we left our point to where we got home, even longer for you, for a 90-minute flight. But all that other time period that was built in, in, in 12 hours in an RV, I could be from here to south of Washington, D.C. Yeah, um, and we, we've made Elkhart from Massachusetts in yep. 14, 15 hours. Yep. Uh, you know, they, you know, the people are not going as far this year, but that happens sometimes when the gas prices skyrocket a little bit or that uh, in, uh, inflation sets in a little bit. But 52% of the RVers will be planning trips between four and seven hours from home. 33% are opting for shorter getaways with at least one RV trip planned within three hours of their residence. And you know what? You look at those reports, and Scott does such a phenomenal job in digging so deep into um, different 
different um, demographics, whether it's millennials, whether it's Gen Xers, et cetera. Um, he's got it all. And the fact is, um, despite what people say about the economy, people are still going to utilize their RV. Oh, yeah. and, this, and spending money. Karen, Karen yep. Consulting, which is yep. Scott's market research firm, is by far the best company of its kind yep. in the United States today to do the recreational vehicles, to do outdoor uh, activities and uh, exploring the outdoors. So he's yep. he's the man. I was glad to see RVIA hook and, up with him to use some of his talents. Yeah. Also in the news is our friends, Allie Rasmussen and her crew at Spacious Skies Campground that one right nearby here, Minuteman, right up in Littleton, just 45 minutes from where I am, close to where you used to be during the summer, has been yeah. named one of the top 10 campgrounds in the entire United States by, uh, is it USA Today or Travel and USA League? Today, yeah, USA Today. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you it know, was the, the only it was the only campground listed on the East Coast. And of course, all of these types of surveys use different criteria as to what they have. But any any rating that you have, especially something like USA Today that does those things every year, is significant. And and this is a real gem in the Spacious Skies Network. Well, as close as you can get to Boston. The interesting story about, well, you know, you said you can't get any closer to Boston. I mean, people say, oh, I want to be within 10 miles. You cannot be that. There's just no campgrounds there. OK, however, the the spacious sky story is so interesting because Allie and her husband were campers and they went out with their kids um, on a trip a couple of years ago or several years ago now, probably five or six and said, um, you know, they had trouble finding campgrounds. And they said, you know what, we can do a good job at this, maybe a better job than the places that we visited. So they started with one and they're they're up to 15 campgrounds now. But the thing is this. Allie, who is the um, chief marketing officer, and I think she has a couple of other corporate titles, um, she's a camper herself, and uh, it's not a big corporation. So if you want to uh, find out something, call Spacious Guys. You'll get yeah, to Allie. She's, she's, a, she's a rising rock star. Uh, yep. She's going on to the uh, RV. Uh, no, the oh, the new name. Oh, out of hospitality, in Ohio. Yeah. Ohio. Uh, their board of directors. So she is in three years of not being anywhere near other than being a consumer. Yep. She has reached the highest levels and gained the respect of all of her peers in the industry. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, not only indoors, but outdoors. And uh, speaking of outdoors, Outdoorsy, an RV peer-to-peer -peer rental company has come up some Another amazing statistics, they call it, what, the family family values tour for 2024. And they, just like Scott Karn's stuff, uh, Scott Bear's stuff, um, mm -hmm. they, they just dig so down deeply into the various demographics out there. Again, Gen Zs versus Gen X versus baby boomers, uh, adventure camps versus fully developed camps. Um you know, how long they staying? Are they staying four to seven days? Are they staying one to three days? Uh, but all it shows is that camping is still one of the best values for your dollar when it comes to vacation and leisure travel. Yeah, this one was called Generations in the Wild, the 2024 U.S. Family RV Travel Report. So it was kind of geared towards the uh, enjoyment of the total family uh, when they're out there, but they did it by generations. Yep. Uh, and Gen Z, they thought was they're most likely to travel. They were the majority of 65% saying they plan to take at least five RV trips. Uh, and also developed, it was also a family flair and a, uh, I guess we can call it a religious flair, but what getting the family back together, together. and family values, you know, I like the terminology she used, digital uh, digital detox of getting them off the computers, spending the time with the families. Uh, Which, and, hold, and on. The hold on. But, but the irony of that, and I don't disagree with that, but the ir irony of it is that the single most uh, demanded capability of a campground is good internet. Now, whether it's, that, whether it's that for the mom or dad to work or whether it's that for the kids to uh, connect with their friends, but you know, you talk about going there and um, and de unhook, but yet hooking up is the uh, 
prominent feature of what makes a good campground. Yeah, the, the, the baby boomers were more likely to put the uh, digital devices down. Uh, they yep. they included, but they the baby boomers spent a lot more time with their kids and their grandkids. But the younger generation, like the Gen Zs, um, they in, have embraced that work-life balance of going out on the road and then doing their work from the outdoors. Exactly. So, they, you know, this the, the uh, Gen Z is more like 70, 40, 47 percent are more likely to seek out free RV accommodations this year. So they like to get away from the, the typical campground. Yep. But the campgrounds are, the are, are continuing to improve the amenities and, and with an eye towards families as they get back into their uh, RVing and camping experiences. Yep. There you go. So that is yep. the news section for the week and uh, we want to wish everyone safe travels during this memorial day weekend season some people are leaving like wednesday or thursday and some stretch it out to the next tuesday but uh, you know i'm sure the traffic on the interstates will be uh, biggest on friday and monday this one you know i don't know how you feel about it but i i i feel like this one kind of snuck up on us and you know, we were traveling, we had lots of other things, and then all of a sudden we wake up this week and they're talking about long weekends and Memorial Day. And I actually had to go and look at a calendar and say, it can't be this early, can it? Yep. And uh, yeah, so I heard people talking about it today. So I think uh, I think you'll see a lot of the long weekends, and I, I know you'll see a lot of RVs out there. So be safe out there and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Great. There we go. That is it. We get our news from... RV Business in Woodall's Campground Magazine from our friends Rick Kessler and Ben Quiggle. And um, stay with us. We've got a great show lined up right here. Where about? On the Camper Report Show. Hey there, RVers. We get it. Your insurance and warranty needs are as unique as your travel destinations. That's why RVer Insurance has teamed up with Wholesale Warranties to cover all the bases. From health insurance to RV coverage and warranties, we've got you sorted every step of the way. With a solid track record in providing top-notch health insurance and affordable RV insurance options, RV insurance has you covered. And for those unexpected repair bills, look no further than our friends at Wholesale Warranties, leaders in reliable coverage and customer support. Start your RV protection journey today at rvrinsurance.com or wholesalewarranties.com slash RVer insurance. All right, that show's a little bit different this week. We are actually in Elkhart, Indiana at Elevation Park Model Home. So we're gonna spend a lot of time on the show tonight talking about park models, what they are, the people who make them. You're gonna introduce them? Joel Letterman. Okay. And Brent Cattaro, right? And they are the founders and they founded Elevation at night, in 2021 in the middle of COVID. That's right. And they had they had the guts to stick the shovel in the ground and say, you know what, we can do this better and we can do it and have a lot more fun. So this is going to be nice. And this is, did you, if you take it and do a panorama of the uh, the lobby. You down. do the interview, I'll do the camera. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, Joel. Yes, sir. He's telling me what to do. He, Go ahead. That's, that's true, John. That's You're true. right. All right, so assume we have some people watching us this week that may not know. So. They, assume we have. That I may not so. even have any idea sure. what a park model is. We talk about destination camping and there are other variations, but give us the uh, real definition of what a park model is and why you build this particular model of RV and sure. nothing else. Sure. Well, park model is 400 square feet of living space, and these are considered an RV, but it's a very residential built product. So. Uh, Brent and I have the ability to use a, you know, more of a structure like a home rather than a stick and tin or fiberglass RV. So what excited us about this was there's just so many avenues that a park model can be applicable. Uh, it's affordable housing. It's going in campgrounds. Um, it's just a very, very different product than what everybody else is slinging out there. So that, that kind of got us excited. Yeah. And I, and I know that a lot of the developers or contractors out there are starting to take a look at them. But let's talk about primarily the, the park model customer. Who is your customer and who favors the product that you build and why? 
I mean, I'd say it's changed drastically over the last 10 years. Uh, this used to be grandma and grandpa's camper because grandpa got tired of driving a big fifth wheel around and dumping diesel into it. And it has morphed now, especially post COVID or whatever we want to call that, yep. um, people working from home. And so now I can be camping full time, getting my work done and I'm on constant weekend. So it's just changed very drastically and very quickly into who is buying it, which has also changed what the products going into the units yep. have changed with that. Yeah, and, and you're right about the different types of people that are actually building them and, mm -hmm. and buying these products. Socially mobile, they can work from home, they can have an office. Uh, I think the thing that's most impressive when people see them is they say, well, it's, it's just like a tiny home. But, but we don't use the term tiny home in the RV industry because these are legitimate, federally authorized park model homes, but they have to be less than 400 square feet on the first level. That's the only thing that you have to go above that to become a manufactured home, and it's a different ball game altogether. So you see the RV resorts where they only have park model homes, mm -hmm. Uh, and as I said, there'll be developments coming along from real estate people that have it. What, what's your most unique request of a park model? Oh, we've heard it all, Bob. Um, I mean, I think that's kind of the thing that sets us apart a little bit is a lot of these manufacturers want to build 20 of the same thing. You, you, that's just not our game here. Uh, everything is so customized, and I think the further we get, and I have a hard time saying no, which doesn't always go over well, but I think we've picked up a lot of business because of our willingness to think outside the box and, and be that custom manufacturer. And, and you're so right, because there are, in this industry, we have many different companies, similar type brands, but they go down a production line and whatever they decide to build that here, and that's fine, I'm not knocking the business model, that's their business model. For sure. But for a consumer to be able to come to you and say, build me my park model, mm -hmm. And, and work with you on the appliances, work with you on the dimensions, work with you on your outside decks, work with you on the colors of the siding. It truly becomes their home. It is, it's custom built. I mean, they're it picking is. from all these different colors and options, but mm -hmm. I mean, Brent, you can speak to that a little bit more. I, I wanna go back to what you said, Bob, on the tiny home thing. I mean, t talk about why we're different than tiny homes, because that is the misconception of park homes. Right, because the RV industry, we are working within the RV industry and the inspectors in the RV industry, and you know that from the, the manufacturing back here. Why don't you explain that process and why that seal on the side is so important, because you are inspected by a third party. And, and not only that, but we are a quarter mile away from them. And being a new company, RVIA loves to come in. They've actually called us to say, can we bring people through? Uh, there's an RV uh, company that comes down and they've taken a look at our facility to help with their training methods. Um, but that's exactly what it is. It's the comfort, not only from a consumer, but from a financial institution, bank or whoever, to say, okay, somebody has put eyes on this. They've actually looked at not just how good is the two by four, but your electrical, there's a purpose to it. It's done why it's done. It follows an NEC code that is specific to park models. Um, yeah, this isn't the tiny home that grandma built in her backyard and is hoping stays upright for a winter. It is mm. built for purpose. Well, the closing thing on that that benefits you as a manufacturer, tiny homes are not regulated. There are some manufacturers Correct. that try to be in the, in the industry. So, you don't know what kind of propane system you're getting. You don't know how the electricity was put in right. here. Everything is documented, everything is authorized, and they can pick it out and, and do what they want. And the ability to customize is fantastic, and that's why you see the growth of your company. I mean, 2021 was only three years ago. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'm with Joel and Brent at Elevation Park Model RV. That's half the show, but sadly you're gonna to have to watch John on the second half of the show, but I'm sure it'll work out fine, John. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Kemp Report Show. Uh, in our earlier segment with Mr. Zagami, you heard a little bit about what a park model is and uh, how it differs from a tiny home and a traditional RV. In this segment, we're gonna find out a little bit about the manufacturing of this unit because as we tour the uh, operation area, 
it was very fascinating because uh, totally different than the traditional RV modeling, even though, again, RVIA is the governing board that gives you the sticker that uh, Bob talked about. So, Joel, tell me, um, wh where do you start? What, these come on wheels. Do you, do you build the house and then stick the wheels in the side of it, or does it come on a platform? Or, or just no, walk? yeah, you're right there, John. We, we use a frame. So we're buying a, a steel frame, uh, big 10-inch I-beams that run the length of the trailer, and then we, we have the axles and wheels already in place. And then we build the floor from there and, and go from the ground up. Mm -hmm. So very different. Okay. And I think it's safe to say that even though it comes on wheels, these are, these are designed to get wheels to get from the manufacturing facility here. What is it, 65,000 square mm -hmm. feet? Yes, sir. In Correct. the back there, brand new, state of the art with all the air moving around yeah. and... Uh, under one roof. Under one roof, okay. Um, but they're not designed to move from park to park. I mean, they're really designed to go from here to a dealership to... I like to tell home, people right? they're semi-permanent. Because we will get it from here to kind its like end how destination. I was in college. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But you know, in two years down the road, you find a new great lot, and you love the idea of relocating. Mm -hmm. It can be packed back up, and it can be yeah. relocated. You're not going to do it weekend to weekend. Right. That's the but, whole point. But it's yeah. not that once it's there, it's there forever. Totally you can yeah. you can keep shopping. Okay. Now, as far as construction is concerned. Um, Two by four, two by two, studs, uh, what's, what's the deal? So two by four stud grade construction. Uh, we don't do anything with two by two or two by three on an exterior wall. Uh, and there's some reasoning for that. And a lot of that is just the insulative properties. Uh, the thinner you go, you can't put as much insulation there. So putting bays and stuff like that, you know, you're now you're compromising the overall R value of that unit. Uh, if you go into Canada, they can get into two by sixes and that's kind of its own beast. Okay. Um, but then there are some new products out there like this zip bar that we looked at on the line. You know, it's a two inch thick insulative uh, sheathing that gives you another R9.3 that has no thermal bridging. It's not insulation in a stud and insulation. It's one piece all the way around. So, Continuous. yeah. So okay. there's some pretty great modern technologies that we can offer. Okay, now as far as, you know, in the RV that we own, we have a traditional RV, a mm -hmm. Class C RV. Um, the window, the windows go like this, back and forth. Um, you don't have those kind of windows, do you? No. No, you have no. real, real, quote unquote, real a true residential window. Correct, and it's argon and it's low E. Uh, not a lot of people are doing that. Most of them are just putting whatever window they can have, so. Uh, yeah, it's great being custom because you can make some of those little things happening. I mean, you're not going to deal with the Anderson windows or anything like that. In the past, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have. We've dabbled in that. I was only joking about that. You <laughs> actually have... Our 7 Series is, you know, what we call the highest end out there. I mean, okay. that's something nobody's using right now. We That's a 15-year warranty on those windows. I mean, we've had dealers that you run into a cracked piece of glass or whatever. I mean, they can literally go to any Anderson rep in the country and they will service. And don't, don't feel bad. Some of John's jokes do go flat. Yeah. <laughs> so the other th the question I have is, um, as far as floor plans are concerned, what do you have, two or three floor plans and you just change the colors of the paint to make it look different? Oh, yeah, it's endless opp opportunities, but we kind of settled on uh, seven or eight main floor plans when we started. We really wanted to simplify things. Um, some other companies, anytime you make a change, it gets a new number. Here we really wanted to simplify. And so we do allow people to customize off of that, but we try to keep it pretty plain Jane and simple, and then we go from there. Customization is possible. Absolutely. Okay. So they want the a, main floor a larger plans, bathroom versus a... Uh, they're a great starting point, and as we've grown, we've gotten to, well, I like this bedroom, but I like the bathroom from this unit, and so they start mixing and matching, and then that just turns into the blank piece of paper, and we design it from the okay. bottom up. Well, when you talk housing, you have to, you know, you generally say, um, Six rooms, four bedrooms, two baths. Um, you can what do two or three different rooms? Uh, how, how do you? Yeah, typically in, in that four hundred square foot box, you're kind of limited. So I mean, a lot of times two bedrooms is in our in our line of work is kind of rare. So most people are going with the lofts nowadays. So one bedroom with loft is very common. But we do offer two bedroom plans as well. So fine loft. So a loft. I mean, you have six foot six in your bedroom or bathroom. You know, underneath that loft floor, but the loft is additional space above those rooms with a stairway or a ladder going up there where you can use it for storage or additional sleeping. Kids. Kids. I mean, it's a kid magnet. 
They, they love going up there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, appliances. Um, the same that you'd see in an appliance store? We buy direct from GE. Uh, so we have a couple standard pieces. We try to offer some color options. In the 7 Series, we'll offer the cafe package, which is you've seen some of the matte white and matte black, and then they've got the the really nice high-end finishes to them. Uh, so if I so, wanted an avocado refrigerator. <laughs> you know, there's probably one out there somewhere. <laughs> what was the other color there? It was like a gold with the... Yeah, gold and yellow with stainless that, with those there. with those boomerangs running through right, it with exactly. the yeah you know, fiberglass tops yeah um, you know so it it appears as though the designer in the in the owner the the design genes in the owner not designer genes yeah. but you know they can pretty much uh, pick their uh, how about wall coverings inside is it is it wallpaper is it paint is it you know I, I see you've got a lot of stone books yeah. now too. Yeah, we've got a lot of different feature wall materials, but yeah, it, just like you said, they are literally picking everything from the ground up. It's like building a house, uh, which oftentimes is not great for production. Uh, but we made a decision at the beginning here that we didn't want to be concerned with the number going out the door, but the quality going out the door. And so I think um, we allow people to dream up their ideal unit and make it super custom. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're just proud to build people exactly what they want. And, and I think a lot of times that's so atypical in in the RV industry. I mean, I've always said to, uh, to Bob, who, who owns one, uh, that in my opinion, the park model property, I don't want to say prop, park model RV, even though that's a proper technical term, park model home is probably one of the best values you can find in secondary housing, you know, for a, for a summer home or for a winter home, whatever the mm -hmm. case may be. Um, why does it take so, why is, why is the industry not pushed itself more to make this more of a known alternative to uh, you know, buying a cottage on a lake somewhere that's already 50 years old and falling apart. Okay. When you could bring one in. That's right. Right? Um, or does that go back to Washington? I mean, this is, this is a little hidden gem. And these are not built to, you know, you're not buying a pop-up and you're gonna flip the thing and buy a different one in two or three years. There's there's a value add to this product that, you know, say something goes wrong and they're built by humans and our people care like no other. But when something goes wrong, you can also walk into a Lowe's and buy a residential piece that is probably gonna take the place of whatever that piece is. Um, these last, and that's a huge difference. There's a comfort with that, that I'm not having to worry about my walls delaminating or whatever the case. I mean, this is this is a solid product built by great people. I mean, when you look at, you talk about comfort, but when you look at some of the new units now with the uh, with the new flooring, okay? And, um, you know, it used to be that everything was carpeted, mm -hmm. right? Everything was carpeted, and there were a couple place, pay, uh, places in the kitchen that, you know, you didn't carpet yeah, right. it. But you've got so many more new building products now, and, um, you know, even in, I think one of the units you showed me, had, what, what did you call that wall with the pipe? Um, uh, the view rail. The view yeah. rail, um, where I said with Brent a little bit later when, when you were out in another area, um, it doesn't cut the room in half. Yeah. I mean, you really have two distinct rooms. You've got a, you know, a raised yeah. living mm -hmm. living area. Great separation. Um, but there's no walls to say, okay, that's half the room and this is the, you know, a third, a third, and a third. Yep. Um, just seems kind of amazing. Well, uh, I know Bob's been in the park model for a little yeah. while here. I hear you're shopping, maybe we'll get you into an elevation here. Oh, soon. there we go. So that's the story. We hope to have um, educated you just a little bit on what a park model is. Special thanks to our friends at Elevation Park Model RV Company in Elkhart, Indiana. Mm -hmm.